Do you want your life to experience transformation and change for the better? Then, you have to let go and trust God. What does it mean to let go? And how can you daily and actively trust God with everything going on around your life? These questions and many more will be examined in this video. So, ensure you stick to the end. Letting go means to stop holding on to those painful memories, thoughts, and unhealthy habits. It also means to stop dwelling on the past or worrying about the future. It means detachment from anything that makes you anxious or unhappy. It means refraining from trying to control everything and everyone around you. In this process, you free yourself from emotional burdens in exchange for the peace of God. It is detaching yourself from the trauma of the past that has held you down for so long and laying them down at the feet of the Master in exchange for His healing. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 through 14 says, Forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Letting go and surrendering to God is not pretending that your worries, pains, or concerns do not exist. No, it is accepting that you can't control everything, but choose to surrender to the one who has everything under control. It is a deliberate action. Letting go is freeing yourself from obsessive thoughts and unhappy feelings. This might seem difficult to do, but with the help of the Holy Spirit and intentionality, it is possible. This is where learning comes in. You need to learn to let go. For instance, if a particular item of clothing is old, torn, or no longer fitting, what do you do? You dispose of it and buy a new one. In the same way, you should treat those negative thoughts, unpleasant memories, and unhealthy lifestyles as such. Not until you see trying to have everything under control as something detrimental to your peace and sanity, you will never learn to let go. How about the toxic relationships you're still holding on to? Sometimes you need to let some people leave your life so you can move forward and fulfill destiny. You cannot sail when the anchor is holding your ship. You need to pull it up. Ultimately, letting go is like pulling up the anchor of your ship and starting to sail. Most people are afraid to let go. They are attached to beliefs, habits, possessions, and people that connect them to negativity. How about those weaknesses that God has been asking you to do away with? Anger, grudges, resentment, and envy are like ropes that tie you down. You gain nothing from them but lose a lot by holding on to them. You need to learn to let go of them. When you do this, watch how things change for the better in your life. Letting go is also important for spiritual growth. It is one of the most important steps towards spiritual awakening. You must cut loose the rope that ties you down, like shackles to negative habits and sin. You need to cut every attachment to them, so you can move on to a better and happier life. Sometimes, holding on can do more damage than letting go. When you are in a season of change or facing an unknown future, it's tempting to hold on to what you know, that is, your comfort zone. But as a Christian, your life should be dynamic and full of growth, not one of comfort and complacency. Your life is like a puzzle piece. God is orchestrating a beautiful picture. It's tempting to get attached to one piece of the puzzle. God wants you to live an open-handed life to Him, knowing His ways are higher than ours. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8-9 through nine says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. What He gives or takes away is for your good. He doesn't remove things from your life to hurt or discourage you. Rather, to help you, He removes things that seem good but are detrimental to your spiritual growth. You simply need to trust His leadings. Your life has a purpose bigger than your happiness and comfort. This purpose is God's glory. Why hold on too tightly to a created thing instead of trusting the Creator? It's normal for doubt and fears to creep in. And you may even question God's goodness when things don't work out the way you desire, making it harder to trust God's plan and let go of your plans. As a result, you may try to regain control instead of surrendering it. But dearly beloved, if you knew everything God knew and could see the bigger picture that He has in mind, you would trust His leading 100% of the time. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3 says, The Lord works out everything to its proper end, even the wicked, for a day of disaster. Beloved, why not entrust your unknown future to a known and loving God? Of course, it's not always an easy thing to do, 
but it's a must if you desire to grow in Christ. As you fight to stay surrendered in times of uncertainty, always remember that God knows what He's doing. God sees the end from the beginning and everything in between. Nothing is too hard for God to understand or too big for Him to accomplish. If He's leading you down a certain path, there's no need to worry about what will happen or try to control every outcome. He created you, the world, and everything in it. You can trust His guidance completely. If He's leading you to let go, it's for a purpose. If you don't let go of the past, you won't be able to take hold of what's next. Jesus didn't sacrifice Himself on the cross to save you from sin, so you could live a mediocre life with your best days behind you. No. Jesus came to give you abundant life. You can let go of what was and look forward to what is to come with hope, knowing that God is working all things together for your good according to His purpose. He has plans for you that are beyond your wildest dreams, things you don't even know you want yet. God is shaping you into the image of Christ. However, God will indeed give you the desires of your heart when you trust in Him. He won't give them to you at the expense of your spiritual growth. Trusting God in uncertainty is one way you grow in your faith. It's not that He doesn't want to bless you because He does, but more than giving you what you want, He wants to build your character to sustain it and use everything you'll receive for His glory. You can only know what He wants to do by seeking Him through His Word and prayer. You will face trials as you pursue God's will. Only through communion with God will you learn how to navigate tough situations. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5-6 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. Beloved, you need to learn to trust God. This is such an important life skill for all believers. Life is full of minor annoyances and major disappointments. For each of them, you must trust God. You must always be learning to trust God more. Whether you've been a believer for four days or 40 years, you will continually be learning to trust God. Every other thing will fail you, but Jesus is the only one who will never disappoint, let you down, or abandon you. He is always there, faithful and true, ready to hear and respond to your desperate cries and praise. Now, to the big question, how does one learn to trust God? Think for a moment about how most children learn to trust their parents. When a baby is born, he has never known want, cold, hunger, discomfort, pain, or loneliness. All these sensations are new and disturbing. The only thing the baby can do is cry. Usually when he cries, someone responds and fixes the problem, and the crying stops. The baby is content again. He has learned that crying will bring someone to fix his problems. Eventually, he learns that whoever that someone is, mom, dad, grandma, can be trusted to fix the next problem. Trust is beginning to be learned. It works the same way with you and your trust in God. You show your trust by crying, just as that baby did, but your cries take the form of prayers. As prayers are answered, you learn over and over again that God can be trusted. So, you continue to trust Him. Simple, right? But if you are still struggling with that and finding it hard to trust God with your day-to-day -day experiences, here are a few steps to put into practice to enhance your trust in God. First, Stop trusting in your wisdom and experience. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Your heart can deceive you so easily. You cannot trust yourself. You need the Holy Spirit to help you maintain the biblical standard God has set for you. Second, trust the Word of God. It never changes. God's Word will keep your life on the narrow road if you obey it. Obeying the Word of God is proof that you are trusting both the Word and the author. If you say that you trust the Word or trust God but don't obey His commands, then you are deceiving yourself. Trust in God is shown by trusting His Word and the direction it gives for your life. So, trust the Word. But of course, you cannot trust the Word if you don't know it, so be in it daily. This is the third step, to grow in the Word daily, not in Christian books, devotional guides, or published Bible studies, but in the Word itself. If whatever else you are reading does not awaken a hunger for the Word, change your reading habits. Fourth, keep a prayer journal. Having a prayer journal will build your faith as you record faithful answers from your loving Father. 
It will renew your lagging faith when hard times come, as you reread the prayers you recorded months or years before that have changed lives. When the children of Israel crossed the Jordan into the Promised Land, they erected an altar of twelve stones taken from the middle of the river. This was a memorial for the ages to remind the nation of the miracles the Lord had done for them. In the same way, a prayer journal can memorialize your journey with the Lord and His faithfulness. Keep a record of God's work in your life. You'll be amazed at what He does. Finally, find other believers who will hold you accountable for walking with the Lord faithfully. This also means joining a church and serving there, but it is so much more than that. It entails finding a handful of women or men who will surround you with love, uphold you in prayer, encourage you at your weakest, and rejoice with you in your victories. It is knowing they have your back and you have theirs. It is trusting that you are never alone in the battle, whatever the battle may be. When you find such people, cling to them, join them in Bible study, prayer, and worship but live life with them outside the church walls. Call and pray together over the phone on your commute. Share favorite verses every morning by text after your devotions. These are your real brothers and sisters, and you need them. They also need you. This brings the emergence of a new and changed life. You will feel your burdens lifted off your shoulders. You will enjoy peace of mind and a renewed mind. Life can be full of unexpected twists and turns. Sometimes the odds are stacked against you. However, as a believer, you have an incredible advantage. Loving your Heavenly Father, who promised to direct you, standing strong in faith, and allowing God to lead you to victory is what you must do. When life gets tough and difficult, all you need to do is step back and let God take the lead. He will never lead you to destruction. The question is, who is directing your life? Everything will fall into place when you let God direct you. How do you do this? And what are the benefits of giving Him the reins of your life? You will discover everything in this video, so ensure you watch till the end. God created everything on the earth, but it is not the one directing everybody. What leads some are their wealth and their IQ. And for some, it's social media. They don't have any knowledge of God's divine guidance. They only follow everything others do on social media, thus living a life of confusion. This shouldn't be your lot. You need God's directions in your life. How can God direct you? He directs you through His Word. He gives instructions, and as a believer, your duty is to follow. However, God will not force you to follow His direction. He lets you decide, which means God can love you and show you the path to fulfillment, but never force you to follow Him. However, I beseech you to follow Him because the best can only be found in God. Yes, the beginning may not be rosy, but the end of it all will favor you. God will not lead you into danger. Instead, He will take you through tough terrains that will end in your purpose. That is why you must trust God when He directs you. You may not see the end of where you're going, but keep moving according to His Word. God isn't asking you to figure it all out. He needs you to walk by faith not circumstances. God wants you to trust Him even when it looks foolish. Do you know the beautiful thing about God's direction? Your life will no longer be about you, but about God. Everything in your life will be connected to Him. He won't allow you to fall into the wrong way when circumstances want to jeopardize His plans for your life. When you follow God's directions, Every step you take fulfills a divine purpose. God steps in when He sees that something terrible will jeopardize His plans. The benefits of following God's direction are countless. When God directs you, your life can't remain the same again. You might have failed several times, but you won't fail anymore. You might be struggling to have the necessities of life, but once you give your life to Him, your story changes. 
You might be struggling with ailments, but when you key to his word, your life will never be stagnant, but meaningful and progressive. Following God's plan for your life takes you to heights you never imagined. The only true promotion comes from God. Men can decide to promote you and demote you afterward or keep you in the same position for a lifetime. But when you stay tuned to God, you will never go down again. You will rise against all odds because the one who directs your path is the most powerful God. Likewise, God will protect you. He becomes your covering and defender when he directs you. He will be in your front, back, and on all sides. Remember David. God had anointed him as the next king of Israel. However, he was conscious enough to let God direct his steps. When he killed Goliath, he could have assumed that it was time to take over the throne, but he didn't. He faithfully followed God's plan for his life. If he had not done that, Saul would have been able to defeat him. Even when David had the chance to kill Saul, he didn't because God didn't direct him to do that. Eventually, David ascended the throne. His situation followed the right pattern because he allowed God to lead him. To enjoy the same grace as David did, you must pray and spend time with God. Your relationship with God must be sound and stable, and it all starts from his word. You can't walk outside his word if you want to walk in his direction. And to know that word, you must dedicate time to studying and meditating on it. Psalm chapter 1 verses 1 to 3 says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. The person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. This verse states that what will be your lot when you commit to meditating on God's word. You will always bear fruit in seasons and your leaf will not wither. That means you will not lose anything good. Everything will keep working fine for you. Therefore, don't hesitate to study God's word daily. Then, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal God's plan for you. God has a specific agenda for your life, and only His Spirit can bring this to your understanding. When He answers, listen and obey, even if it doesn't match your expectations. At the end of the day, everything works together for your own good. Let God direct your path. Again, you need to build your foundation on the Lord. Follow His ways and dedicate your life to Him. God is your rock and cannot be moved. While the world and Satan may hurl temptations and trials your way, God will keep you safe and protected. You have nothing to fear because God controls the wind and the waves. Even if you're going through a terrible situation, all you need is God's word. His word speaks to the deep longing of the human heart, offering comfort and a glimmer of light. It continues to grow and provide shelter and comfort to those who follow God. The Lord is more powerful than we could ever imagine. And it only takes a little faith to have God by your side. Just as the mustard seed grows into a large plant, your faith can start small and grow into something bigger. So keep your faith standing in the Lord. Abraham had a very urgent need. He needed a child. But whenever he speaks to God about his need, God reassures him, with his word. And here is a big mystery you must learn and live on today. God is all that you need. 
as he directs your steps, do not place your mind on other externals. Listen to his word. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. God is revealing the same to you today. With God on your side, you don't have to fear anything that comes your way because he can handle it. Nothing is impossible for him. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 says, Have not I commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God commands to Joshua, apply to you today as well. When you face trials and uncertainties, you must remember to be strong and courageous. This doesn't mean that you will never experience fear or doubt, but it does mean that despite those feelings, you trust God's faithfulness and rely on Him. You can have faith that no matter how daunting the circumstances may seem, God's plan for you is good, and He will provide the guidance and strength you need to navigate through them. However, standing strong in faith requires more than just positive thinking. It involves actively trusting God's promises and aligning our actions with His will. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your paths straight. These verses talk about the importance of trusting God wholeheartedly. It means surrendering your limited understanding and seeking His guidance in all aspects of your life. When you submit your way to Him, He takes over your own desires and agendas and recognizes that His plans are higher and more perfect than anything you could imagine. Your trust in Him is a testament to your faith and dependence on His guidance. When you trust Him completely, you open the door for His divine intervention, allowing Him to demonstrate His power. As you cultivate a lifestyle of wholehearted trust in God, you'll experience a deepening of your relationship with Him. Your faith will keep growing in Him, when you release your burdens into His capable hands, you can experience true freedom and peace. Now, let me tell you something. Standing strong in faith doesn't mean we'll never face challenges or experience hardships. The Bible tells us that trials will come. However, your faith empowers you to face these challenges confidently, knowing that God is working all things together for your good. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says that all things work for the good of those who love God, who have been called according to His purpose. It may be challenging to comprehend how God can use your pain, setback, or suffering for good, but His ways are higher than yours, and His perspective is beyond your limited understanding. God has a will for you to win that will never fall short. However, it is important to note that this promise is not limited to certain situations or specific individuals. It applies to all who allow God to lead their lives. Regardless of your background or past mistakes, if you love God and have committed to Him, these promises hold the truth. God's love and faithfulness are not contingent on your performance, but are freely given to all who seek Him. Embracing this truth allows you to find meaning and purpose in your pain. In your moment of weakness, His strength is perfect for you. In your period of uncertainty, God gives you reassurance and hope. 
where your human strength fails, he takes over and gives you a supernatural win. It's easy to talk and believe in the presence of God in our lives when things are going great for us. But when trouble hits, it becomes a whole different deal. However, even in such times, trust the Lord because he will take you through them. God is your father. Therefore, you can lay on his chest as he takes you through the journey of life. Stay faithful because he will never fail you. Everything will fall into place. Who is in charge of your life? Are you? You've been trying your efforts, but none is working. You've done all you can to have everything under control, but everything gets worse. Listen, you need to let go of that situation and let God be in control. You need to surrender your life to God. There are issues of life that will be above your power. When they arise, you need to hand them over to God. Trying to face them yourself is like tying a heavy stone around your neck. You don't need that. That burden is not yours to bear. Why not hand everything over to the burden bearer? How can you completely let go of a situation and let God be in control? Ensure you watch this video until the end. I'm about to reveal how you can release any situation into God's hands. As you apply everything in this video, everything will begin to fall into place. What does it mean for God to take control of your life? It simply means that God has to occupy the driver's seat of your life. Many do not want this to happen because they believe God is slow, but that's not true. God is not slow. God is always on time. But the question still lingers. How do you completely let go of a situation and let God be in charge? First, you need to be patient. Many give their lives to God but take them back when things don't go as they envisage. So, to give God the reins of your life, you must be patient. You may desire to see quick results, but that's not how God works. He doesn't think like a man. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 9 says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. When you become impatient, you're telling God to take his hands off your life. You want to do things your way. But listen, this can have a disastrous end. King Saul and the Israelites were preparing to fight against the Philistines. At this time, the Philistines had a great number. They were as numerous as the sand on the seashore. The Israelites could not face them headlong and had to hide in caves, pits, and among rocks. Saul's soldiers were quaking with fear. However, they had to wait for the prophet Samuel to offer a burnt offering to God on their behalf. Prophet Samuel said he would come in seven days. King Saul had to wait because only the priests could offer burnt offerings to God. However, before the end of the seven days, he became impatient. Thus, he offered the burnt offerings and the fellowship offerings himself. Just by so doing, the king took up a position that wasn't his. Yes, he didn't have a solution for the situation, but instead of letting God have his way, he took matters into his hands. This didn't end well for him. As soon as he finished offering the sacrifice, Prophet Samuel arrived. The prophet told Saul that he had done a foolish thing, and because he had disobeyed God, God had ended his kingdom forever. Don't end up like King Saul. Irrespective of what you might be facing, learn to patiently wait on God. You might incur more problems. Thus be patient, give all to God, and follow any instructions he gives you. To let God be in control of your life, you should learn to act in faith instead of fear. Fear is one of the devil's tools. He injects it into your heart so that you will stop believing in God's power. He puts fear in your heart so that you can make hasty decisions. However, decisions made out of fear do not have a good ending. It most times leads to more trouble. One might have been trusting God for the money to finance a project. God has sent you his word that he would support you on this particular project. However, because nothing happened within the time you wanted it, the fear of losing the project led you into debt. You collected a loan without divine guidance. You started the project, but a big problem occurred along the way. Now you need God's help. Your refusal to walk by faith has led you into trouble. A child of God should never decide for God. When you've put a situation in his hands, let him handle it completely. 
He will make all things work together for your good. He will direct your steps and teach you what to do at all times. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Did you see that? In any situation, don't be anxious. Instead, pray. Tender your petitions to God. Tell Him why He has to answer your request and remind Him of His promises towards you. After this, continue in thanksgiving, and I can assure you that you won't be anxious again. You need to trust God completely to make the best decision for you. God has said He will use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Thus, God's method may look foolish, but He is the all-knowing God. When the Israelites were slaves in Egypt, the Egyptians used them for hard labor. When they cried out to God, He raised a man called Moses. God sent him to demand the people's freedom from Pharaoh. The way God handles situations is always above man's thoughts. Moses was a stammerer. How will a stammerer stand before the powerful Pharaoh? But God was in charge of the situation, and he did use him. When Moses approached Pharaoh, he did what God sent him to do. Everything happened as God said because God was in charge. God can turn impossible situations around when you allow him in your life. You just need to follow his instructions always and get rid of doubts in your heart. No science can explain how Moses' rod turned into a serpent. However, God used that miracle to get Pharaoh's attention. Even though his magicians performed magic, Moses' rod swallowed their serpents. After so many signs, Pharaoh released the Egyptians, which should have confirmed to them that God was in charge. When they got to the Red Sea, they looked back only to see the Egyptian chariots racing toward them. At this point, they began to murmur and complain to Moses. They concluded that they would die in the desert. They had suddenly forgotten all the mighty miracles God had performed in Egypt and that God was in control. Moses had to remind them of who God was and prayed. God told them to stretch his rod over the Red Sea. Immediately, the sea parted and the children of Israel walked on dry ground. Even though God saved them at this point, you need to take note of their actions. They murmured and grumbled at God. You need to know that God detests such things. When you murmur at God, you sound like a housefly in God's ears. A housefly does not make any meaningful sound. It only disturbs the ears. That's what you do to God. You are not making any sense when you murmur to God. You must stop murmuring if you want God's attention. Instead, speak to Him in clear words. Let Him know your concerns and declare that you will let His will come to pass in your life. To let God be in control of your life, you must be ready to ask and follow His instructions every time. Don't assume that yesterday's instructions will solve today's problems. You must be ready to go to God whenever a new situation arises. In a nutshell, don't become familiar with God. You must reference Him at all times, ask for His mind on all issues. When King David became the king of Israel, the Philistines waged war against him on two different occasions. However, God gave him victory in both. But the point here is that the strategy God gave him for the first victory was different from the second. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 18 through 20 says, Now the Philistines had come and spread out in the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? The Lord answered, Go, for I will surely deliver the Philistines into your hands. So David went to Baal Parazim, and there he defeated them. You will notice the Lord did not give him any specific direction on how to attack them, but because he asked before going, he was able to defeat them. However, it was a different story when the Philistines attacked the second time. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 22 through 25 says, Once more the Philistines came up and spread out in the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of the Lord, and he answered, Do not go straight up, but circle behind them and attack them in front of the poplar trees. As soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the poplar trees, move quickly because that will mean the Lord has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine army. So David did as the Lord commanded him, and he struck down the Philistines all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. The second time, God gave King David a completely different strategy. This teaches you to pay attention to details when God is in control. Don't just assume that everything will be fine. 
If King David had not followed God's instructions, he would have risked his life and that of others. If he had assumed that God would go with him without praying again, the Philistines would have defeated him. Finally, if you let go of situations and allow God to control them, you must not give in to your emotions. Emotions are ordinary feelings and feelings do not last. They are unreliable. So to let God have his way, you need to rely on the Holy Spirit instead of your feelings. If you have grudges against someone, your emotions will tell you to keep malice with the individual. However, the Holy Spirit will keep nudging you to release and forgive the individual. If you let the Holy Spirit rule you, you will forgive the individual. This can lead to your enlargement and breakthrough. Silence the voice of your emotions and tune up the voice of the Holy Spirit. If you allow Him to lead you today, you will be happy and free. Make up your mind to allow God to be in charge of your life. You will never regret it. Change is coming. Stop worrying because God is at work. Are you worried about your current status? Does it look like you will never make a headway? You don't know what tomorrow holds for you, but God is telling you right now not to worry. You will experience a change in your circumstances because He is at work in your life. Yes, the process might take a lot of time, but you don't have to be anxious. God has set everything to work in its perfect time. He is about to change everything that needs a turnaround in your life. The hard times you're currently facing won't last forever. Rejoice, a new testimony is coming your way. Have you been battling with a particular illness? Have you lost your job and buried in debt? God has not forgotten you. He is going to fix that problem. He will change your health status. He will connect you with a lifetime opportunity. Your years of infertility are over. Be ready to welcome your babies. Beloved, whatever you trust God for, He will perform it today. God does not sit with His hands folded when you are going through tough times. He cares about your comfort. Therefore, He is assuring you that He will make a way where there seems to be no way. He always comes through in the nick of time. Yes, He might not do it when you want, but He will do it when needed. That's why you need to believe He is in that situation and will not disappoint you. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19 says, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So, keep your mind at rest. God will do a new thing in your life. Irrespective of how terrible that challenge may be, it will not overpower you. That's because Romans chapter 8, verse 38 says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Therefore, give no room for that difficulty to weigh you down. Being anxious will not hasten the change you desire in your life, not even a second faster. The best thing you can do is look up to the one who will always turn things around for your good. Waiting for your miracle or transformation might take a long time. When this period exceeds your expectations, you might give up and think of other solutions. Beloved, finding a solution is not your role. It's God's assignment. Yours is not to worry. God knows the best way to effect a change in your life. So, be rest assured that you will share your testimony. And when it comes, how will you know? God will confirm it through His Word. He honors His Word. If He had said He would change your life, He wouldn't do otherwise. All you need to do is hold on to that promise until it comes to pass. So, when you hit a verse that resonates with your situation, that is God confirming a change. So don't doubt him. Believe in God's verdict over that situation. As God begins to work on your life, he will give you signals that show he's about to perform a breakthrough in your life. He can decide to show you through dreams and visions. He can even confirm through others. The purpose is to make you expect the positive change. He doesn't want you to look elsewhere. Those confirmations are to take away your worries and rejoice because God has not abandoned you and he never will. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11 says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. One way you would know God is in charge is the presence of peace. It is an assurance from God that something good is about to happen. Ordinarily, the situation in your life should make you restless. However, God's presence will calm you in a way you can't fathom. That's how you wait on God with faith that He will not put you to shame. 
took the Israelites several years to get to the promised land, but eventually they got there and their lives changed. They stopped being a sojourner to a landowner. This was because God walked with them from the beginning to the end. Let this encourage you today. God is ever present with you. He is aware of that very thing you are going through. He will always lead you and you will be victorious over all your challenges. And as your faith grows stronger in the Lord, He will stir you up to take positive actions. He will inspire ideas that will lead to your breakthrough. For instance, if you are trusting God for a job, He will give you ideas on how to structure your resume. He will tell you places to apply for opportunities that will bring you closer to your miracle. God will always keep His word. He is always with His children, and He makes a way for them. Now, instead of worrying, what should you do? First, maximize that season for your spiritual growth. Instead of brooding over a situation that you can't help, move closer to God. Pray more, study more of God's Word, attend programs, also build spiritual virtues, learn to become more patient, endure hardship, and more. You need to know that the devil is keen on stealing from you. He wants to keep you down. However, you can show him that he has failed already. Let him know that the great I am lives in you. Instead of crying, burst out in praise. Seek nobody else, but continue to build your faith and walk in divine direction until the change you seek surfaces. Don't let the tough time drain or stress you out. Also, never lose hope in God. Even if there seems to be no change after so many years, keep your faith alive, like Father Abraham. He kept trusting God that he would become the father to many nations. Even though he saw nothing, he kept believing in God. The Bible recorded that he hoped against hope, God truly did not let Abraham down. He gave him Isaac. Thus, Father Abraham didn't wait in vain. Many today don't have this kind of perseverance. We want to see things done as fast as possible. It doesn't always happen that way, so never lose hope. Remember, God will never change His word concerning you. The next thing you can do is declare God's word on the situation. The word of God is life, and it has the potency to react and change everything. John chapter 1 verse 1 makes us understand that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Then it says that God was the Word. That means when God speaks, He speaks Himself. And when you speak the same Word, you are declaring God's supremacy over the situation. So, if you are sick or experiencing a devastating health condition, God can fix your body and make you whole. Perhaps you are trusting God to fix your broken marriage. There is no need to live in fear. You can hold on to God's Word and declare it over your home. Declaring God's Word concerning that situation puts integrity to the test. When you do it, you will experience a turnaround because God cannot lie. Whatever He says, He always brings it to pass. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 10 through 11 says, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. The joy of the Lord is another tool you should leverage instead of worrying. You cannot receive your miracle without creating an atmosphere of joy. The Bible says that joy will enable you to draw water from the wells of salvation. This means that joy is a license into the blessing that God has packaged for you. Joy also helps you focus on God's promises rather than the problem. So, always rejoice in the Lord. Don't let your situation bother your heart. Another wonderful tool you can engage in is praise. As God works to bring your testimony, endeavor to praise Him at all times. Even if you can't see the change, Praise Him for what He is about to do. This attitude shows that you believe strongly in God to change your situation. You know, God can do all things, but He can't praise Himself. So when you praise God, you give Him a special gift. In return, God will answer all your prayers and solve all your problems. King Jehoshaphat understood this when God assured him of victory over three kings. Jehoshaphat arranged for singers to start praising the Lord. You would think these singers were coming after the soldiers. No, Jehoshaphat placed them right in front of everyone. In a nutshell, Jehoshaphat is telling God he trusted him to lead them to the battle. And since he, God, would be in the front, his praise singers must follow. 
God saw his heart from heaven, and before they got to the battlefield, their enemies were already dead. When God stands in the presence of any mountain, it comes crashing down. That is the power of exalting God. Pay no attention to your problem. Instead, trust and praise God all the way. Prayer breaks every barrier that might want to hinder your testimony. God might have released your answers, but a prince of Persia, like the case of Daniel, might hinder their delivery. The only way to stop such an operation is to pray more. And, while praying, ensure that you utilize God's word in your prayers. That's how you bring him to the remembrance of what he had said. Never underestimate the power of praying scriptures. It breaks every stronghold holding your life from turning around. Finally, you must seek the help of the Holy Spirit. You need to ask him for directions on handling the change that is about to happen in your life. If you are expecting a response from a job interview, you can begin to ask the Holy Spirit to teach you how to be a productive and efficient employee. Your change will not pass you by. You must keep your faith intact and give no room to worry. Rest in the truth that God is working behind the scenes. You will live a glorious life. That change you seek is closer than you think. Are you ever tempted to take matters into your own hands? Do you feel on edge, worried or anxious? Perhaps even discouraged? You shouldn't. Why? God is in control. You only need to put everything in His hands. If each day feels like a never-ending struggle, take heart. There is a blessing in this battle. Trust me, when you put everything in God's hands, He will take control. You won't have to worry anymore. But how do you do this? Watch this video until the end as I explain how to let God be in charge of your life and trust Him for everything. The benefits are immense and you'll experience a profound sense of peace and security. What does it mean to put everything into the hands of God? It's not just a passive act, but a powerful choice. It's expressing your wholehearted trust in God, acknowledging Him to direct your paths. And more than that, you're submitting your life to God alone. You're saying, Lord, I know you want what's best for me, so I'm handing everything to you, and I'm looking forward to seeing you act on my behalf. This is the kind of faith that delights the heart of God. But then, when you let God take control, that doesn't mean you don't have a part to play in your situation. It's particularly important to remember this when you're feeling impatient with your finances or relationships. You might think you know a better way, but remember God's word and His plan for you. Place your situation back into His hands. Everything might be hard on your side, but that's when you can discover another dimension of God. This is an opportunity to strengthen your relationship with Him, get to know Him better and more deeply. Trust in His timing and His plan, and you'll find peace in the midst of your struggles. It's one thing to know intellectually that God is your defender, but living it out is another. I encourage you to let go and put your situation back into God's hands. Psalm 37 verses 3 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. This Bible verse says that when you trust and delight in God, He will grant you the desires of your heart. This shows that putting everything in God's hands triggers the answer that you seek. Therefore, I beseech you to start doing this today. Commit everything to His hands. Isaiah poetically and beautifully said that God has chosen and accepted you. There's no need to fear or be dismayed because the presence of God is pronounced in your life. He strengthens and helps you by His Spirit. He upholds you by His trustworthy right hand. What are you holding on to right now that you need to place in the hands of your Heavenly Father? Are you scared of something? Place your fear in the hands of the one whose hand calmed the sea, and he will calm your heart. Leave your hurt in the hands of the one whose hand gave sight to the blind, and he will heal your wounded heart. Put your financial desires in the hands of the one who owns everything, and he will give you peace and security. Put your personal view in the hands of the one whose perspective is perfect, and he will give you clarity. 
Job chapter 12, verse 10 says, In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all humanity. The joy of leaving everything in the Lord's hands is seeing the Lord's hand in everything. Make a clean exchange with Christ. Hand over all to Jesus, whose hand is on your life, and faithfully run the race of life with Him. By faith, leave everything and everyone in the Lord's hands and watch Him solve all the problems in your life. Now, you may wonder, how can I put everything in God's hands? First, you must cast your cares, anxieties, and fears into His hands. As a child of God, you should not live in fear. God has given you the spirit of boldness and a sound mind. However, you need to release that fear into His hands before He can replace it with a sound mind. That's one way to let Him be in control. And how do you give Him your fears? Stop thinking about them. Instead, let your lips praise and adore Him. Next, you need to trust God with your circumstances. God didn't promise you that you would never experience hard times, but He has promised to be there with you to strengthen, keep, and protect you. He will ensure that circumstances do not overwhelm you, no matter how heavy. And as you do this, remember to put your desires in God's hands. Let God know about your wants and needs. Share your ideas, dreams, and plans with Him. Don't isolate Him out of your life. God anointed David as the next king of Israel. However, he knew that he was nothing without God. Therefore, he decided to let God reign in Israel. He never started an endeavor without asking God first. He put all his desires in God's hands, and God guided him throughout his reign and forgave him when he made an error. If you truly want to put everything in God's hands, you must choose to trust His Word more than yourself, no matter how confident you are in your feelings. You might think you know best, but your wisdom and your beliefs contradict God's Word. Then you need to dispose of your thoughts and let God have His way. Remember, God only has the totality of your life when you do what He says. In Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, it says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is God's promise for your life. If you allow Him to have everything about you, He will ensure that the wicked does not have a hold over you. They won't be able to overpower or defeat you. God will always help in your times of need and struggles. In what other ways can you let God be in control of your life? you can begin to pray in faith. Prayer humbles you. You might think you know all that you need, but when you pray, God reveals a new way to you. This alone is enough to humble you. Also, you need to mark the word faith. There's no point in praying when you don't have faith in God. It's like asking a person for something with the mind that he won't give it to you. If you have such a heart towards God, he's not yet in control of your life. The Bible says in the book of James that whoever comes to God must believe in his existence and the ability to answer all prayers. God's arm is not too short to save. Nothing is impossible with him. Knowing this, you can keep praying no matter how impossible the situation seems, no matter how far that loved one seems to be from God. God can save them no matter how bleak your finances are. God can provide. So continue to pray to the Lord. Then, see God's hands in whatever happens to you. When He is in charge of your life, you'll see every trial and temptation as part of His plans for your life. You won't see them as a punishment, but as a part of His love. The simple truth is that the devil cannot attack you without getting permission from God. Remember Job's story? Satan had to ask God for permission before touching Job, and God always placed limits on Satan. You can do this, but you cannot do that. This shows that God controls all things. He also controls Satan and demons. Hence, he won't let anything happen to you without giving you the grace to handle it. Also, you need to give thanks and rejoice in all things. Giving thanks is an act of faith. When you're going through hard times, God is working behind the scenes of your life. So you must trust his word and promises. Rejoice and give thanks. Don't focus on what's not working or the evil in the situation. Instead, thank God for what He is to you. 
He's watching over you and ensuring that you get nothing but the best out of that situation. Your child might be struggling with a terrible illness right now. The doctors might have even given up on him, saying he has no hope of being well again. Listen, that's not God's word for your life. His word says that by his stripes, you were healed. This means God has provided your child's healing. You only need to tap into that provision through faith and thanksgiving. So instead of thinking and worrying about his health, turn your heart to God right now. Remember, he healed the blind man and made the lame walk. That means there's nothing he cannot do. Therefore, open your mouth and begin to thank him. Don't let the devil steal your miracle with ingratitude. You might have lost your job or your business went bankrupt. God is reaching out to you now. Don't give up on him. Instead, commit the situation into his hands. He has a reason for this. So instead of worrying, begin to sing praises. The devil will eventually grow tired of your submission to God and, and angrily leave your life alone. And as you thank God, endeavor to pursue holiness and sanctification. The Christian life hangs on following Jesus and obeying his every command. You need to put sin to death and so to the Spirit. This won't happen easily. Notwithstanding, you need to work out what God has worked in you. Moreover, he's not leaving you alone. He's still working on you. He is shaping you for his glory and his pleasure. So when you submit yourself to him, he gains free access to your life and makes you more like him. God is your shepherd. Therefore, you can trust him to lead and guide you. He will instruct and teach you how to behave. He'll lead you to men who will give you godly counsel through his spirit. But for all of these to happen, God must control your life. Nothing is too complicated or difficult for him. In all life's changing and challenging seasons, put everything in his hands. He will reveal his glorious power to your life in unique ways. Don't let a situation you can't control frighten you. Take time to strengthen your faith in the matchless power of God's hand upon your life. He knows the future. He knows everything you should do and desires to guide you even more than you desire his guidance. Therefore, put all in his hands and let him have his way in your life. Losing something or someone precious is indeed a painful experience. It is always difficult to get over those losses. Sometimes we might end up taking to harmful practices like overeating and drugs in a quest to get over the loss of something dear to us. God has shown us through his dealings with the people of old that he is concerned about us. He calls himself the restorer of the path. We can see his restoring power through the scriptures. He restores us back to his love whenever we stray away from him. David lost his wives and properties when the Amalekites invaded the land. They took everything from the men that were with him also. The state made them extremely sorrowful, and the men even accused David. David asked God if he should pursue the enemies, and God gave him permission. David pursued and recovered everything he lost. There was nothing that was left behind out of everything that was his. David was able to get back everything the enemies took from him, not because he was strong, but because God empowered him. God can bring back everything you have lost, whether physical loss or spiritual or even intellectual. God can always give everything back to you. An interesting fact is that God always restores in multiple folds. The Bible says God gives beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for the morning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He has done it in the past and has not changed. Whatever you are going through, God can restore your life to the best place you have ever been. Just continue to hold on to the power of God. Never settle for the belief that your life is about to end. God's plans for you are of peace and not evil, to give you hope and a future. The best is yet to come your way. 
Keep holding God by his word and let your heart find comfort in his word. The devil is a thief who steals, kills, and destroys. But we have a God who gives life, and not just any kind of life, but abundant life. Abundant life is yours in Christ. I want to encourage you to make your hope in God strong. No matter how dark the tunnel is, Jesus is the light that will shine through for you. Do not lose hope. As long as you have your hope intact, you will surely recover all that you have lost. You might have lost a job, an opportunity, a school year, or even a trusted friend, but you will recover all. Loss is something devastating that no one deserves to experience. However, this is the reality for a lot of people today. We lose certain things in our lives and sometimes in the most unexpected ways possible. Friends betray us before we can even blink and opportunities fly across our heads at the slightest mismanagement. You know that time when you look at your life and you cannot remember the last time anything good happened to you? That is the best time to look at the words in Isaiah 43, 19 in IV. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Those down moments are times we need to get closer to God. He is the only one who can make lemonade out of the sour lemons that life throws at us. God is working out something for you. God will restore all the years we think we have lost, as he said in this verse, Joel 2.25 NIV. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locust and the young locust, the other locusts and the locust swarm, my great army that I sent among you. Joseph lost his mother at a tender age. His relationship with his father was severed, and he became a slave in a strange land. His future looked gloomy already. As if all that was not enough, they lied against him and was eventually thrown into prison. That could have been the end for him, but no, he could not end like that because God was involved in his life. When everyone would have thought nothing could come from being an ex-convict, he became the second in command to the king of Egypt. That is what God can do. God restored the years he had lost in one day. He did not have to slowly climb the political ladder. God handpicked him and placed him at the top. The restoring power of God is still at work today. Whatever you have lost, God can give you multiple back in return. You only need to trust him, keep your hope alive in him, and believe that all his promises will be fulfilled. Are you feeling tired and weary? Is everything becoming so gloomy that you can no longer see any light? Is your life surrounded by unending difficulties? Are you battling sickness and life-threatening diseases? Receive hope from the Word of God today. Take time to look at the ones who have trusted God with their lives. See how they were not put to shame and know that you also will never be put to shame. The light will shine on you again. Trust the one who sits in the driver's seat in your life. When you travel in a car, you don't panic because you trust the driver to take you to your destination safely. Sometimes you might even sleep or get busy with your phone while the ride lasts. You can do all these things during the ride because your heart believes the driver is an expert. If you were to be in the car with someone still learning how to drive, you would be constantly looking around, trying to control the person and endlessly issuing instructions. I bet you will not even be able to take your eyes off the road, let alone sleep. This is because you know the driver is not capable and has not earned your trust yet. Well, God is more than capable, and then some. We see in the Bible how he restored joy to the lives of those who trusted him with their troubles. Do not be discouraged. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Even if everyone around you talks you down and no one says a word that will lift you in your trying time, 
Let God be your comfort. Let your heart find hope in God. 1 Corinthians 2.9 NIV However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love Him. There is hope for you in God. The best is yet to happen in your life. Do not lose your faith or allow your faith to be weakened. Be strong in faith and also be of a sound mind. God will fight your battles for you. No matter how fierce the battle is, God can give you victory. The Israelites were not as strong as most of the nations they fought against while they were going to the Promised Land. They recorded victory whenever they went in the name of the Lord. The power of God is still there to address all the needs in your life. God is still actively involved in putting all your enemies to shame. The Word of God is for you to read and meditate on so that your heart will find comfort as you face the hardships of life. When you neglect the Word, it becomes difficult for the Word to be grounded in you. Jesus described two types of buildings in one of His parables. One of the houses was founded on the rock, while the foundation of the other was on the sand. The wind and storm came against the two buildings. They both experienced the same condition, but they did not have the same outcome. The one on the sand was brought to ruins, while the other remained standing strong. The difference is how the Word of God finds expression in them. Always face the battles in your life in God's name. Facing battles in life is non-negotiable, but you can choose to confront whatever comes your way with great faith in the power of God. Do not be afraid. Make sure fear has no ground in your life. The fear of what tomorrow will bring, the fear of how your needs will be met, and any other fear you might have should be handed over to God. Take them to the foot of the cross and leave them there. Let God handle them. God will take care of your needs. He has done for others. Yours won't be an exception. The needs in your life are nothing compared to the power of God. You should not give in to worry and anxiety as you go through life. They are a heavy cross, too burdensome for your feeble hands to carry. God has promised that He will take care of you. Take His word for it and allow peace to reign in your heart. No matter what you are going through in life, know that Jesus is on your side. Jesus is fighting for you. You're not alone on the battlefield of life. You're on the winning side. Jesus is with you. And should you feel really exhausted or broken, cry out to God for help. It's okay to cry out for help. It's okay to be vulnerable before your Maker in your secret place of prayer. It's not a sign of weakness or that you're giving up, but a sign of total surrender and acknowledging your limitations. Make praying for help a daily and continuous practice in your life. Also, learn to cry out to God in praise. Praise Him for the things He has done in the past. Adore Him for the ones He's yet to do. Know that where God is taking you to is a glorious place. You would be astonished at the fulfillment of His promises. Believe that what God has for you is bigger and better than anything you have ever had before. He has promised you what the eyes have not seen. Know that what He is set to do is beyond what you can ever imagine. Draw strength from the promises of God. Keep the Word of God in your heart always. No matter how tired you are feeling, God has a plan for you. Your future is secure in Christ. I want to encourage you to continue to love God with all your heart. Never doubt His power to save you from whatever predicament you are going through. Your situation will turn around for good. He will do a new thing in your life that will be the answer to all your problems. A simple answer from God will wipe away all your tears of multiple years. Rejoice in the Lord, dearly beloved. Once again, I say rejoice, for a dumbfounding miracle is coming your way.